So, we meet again. This is Aaron, and you're listening to the Oxrageous Podcast. It's been a long, long bye week, but we finally have another game to talk about. So come on in, and let's get going. Oh, man, it's still raining on the Gator Nation. It's been raining steadily since last Saturday. Without any sign of letting up. I mean, until that point, it had only been overcast, and then the skies opened up about 6 o'clock. It's cold and wet. We're soaked to the skin. And totally miserable yet again. That's just a little illustration there as to where we are as a fan base. It's just a downer right now. It's a tough time. A lot of people were still holding out hope and optimism. New offensive coordinator and all that stuff. We were waiting for the Alabama game. Not to win, but to gauge where we were as a program compared to the elite. And it appears for a lot of those that were holding out hope, it vanished on Saturday when they realized just how far we have to go. They were expecting a lot more progress, and it just didn't happen. In fact, it almost seemed like we took a step backwards, at least in a lot of areas. The worst thing about a down period like this is not the fans being upset and and screaming for, for coaching changes and benchings and all that. That, to me, shows that they care. That's the kind of stuff I like to see. Do some people go too far and are too emotional and irrational? Of course. But so what? At least I know they care. They want what's best for the program. It's apathy. That's the problem. That's a really big problem right now. There's a big chunk of the Gator Nation that simply isn't paying much attention anymore. That could mean not going to the games. That could mean not even watching the games. Or watching the games with one eye while you do laundry with the other. Something you would never do before. And like message board participation, which I monitor across all the boards, I think it's down everywhere. Because I think a lot of people just don't care. I think that stinks. I think that's the worst part of having a coach near the end of his tough tenure, is that the fans are either screaming or they've gone silent. And it's only when you finally change horses that so many of those people come back out of the woodwork and get excited again about football. Now, of course, there's other things you can do to get a down fan base excited, such as changing the starting quarterback, for example. Most of the discussion since the Alabama game hasn't been much champ. A lot of it has, but Jeff Driscoll has been the biggest topic of discussion. And for good reason. Because on offense, he's the one cog that's keeping the machine from rolling. The receivers seem to be getting open, and even the offensive line blocked really well against Bama, which surprised a lot of us. Uh, Jeff had enough time for the most part. But his vision and decision-making was so poor, he grinds everything to a halt. And you find yourself returning to must-champ ball. Run up the middle, run up the middle. But I think that's a direct result of Jeff playing so poorly. Now, ultimately, it goes back to the coaches because they're the ones that get Driscoll prepared and they're the ones that run him out there. So here's Will Muschamp on perhaps the hottest seat in college football. An absolute no-brainer decision for him should be, I'm going to put Treon Harris out there full-time and let him go. And why? Well, one, because it'll excite the fans. The fans haven't had something to be excited about in years. That would excite the fans to see that kid out there. Secondly, as a true freshman, he's expected to make mistakes. So when he inevitably makes some mistakes, the fans are going to shrug their shoulders and say, he's a freshman, he's going to make those mistakes. He's going to get a pass on those mistakes. They're done giving Jeff Driscoll a pass. It's been too long now. Thirdly, the fans would give Muschamp credit just for trying something new to get a spark. Even if it didn't work, he'd be given credit for it. And fourth, he may just go in there and kick butt. So, saying all that, it makes too much sense. There's no way Muschamp and the boys will do it. That kind of decision goes against every fiber of his being, throwing a true freshman in there. So, I wouldn't count on seeing Treon Harris, unfortunately, unless they put him in for a play or two to run the Wildcat. It just makes too much sense. I posted an article recently on Gator Chatter from uh, Tom Furland at Gator Country. He's a a big X's and O's guy, and he he broke down the plays in the first half from Alabama 
it's just amazing all the mistakes Jeff Driscoll made, uh, both with, with missing the open man, footwork, bad throws. He's not a freshman anymore. Some guys just don't have it. You know, not that Will Muschamp has a problem with that. We keep reverting to Mushball, and I think he's just thrilled. Because we all know he doesn't like the hurry-up. He doesn't like the up-tempo. He doesn't like Kurt Roper's offense. We knew that coming in. You know, but we were promised all these things in the offseason. No huddle, 18 seconds between snaps. It's a shame so many of us fell for that. And at press conferences this week, Will Muschamp and Kurt Roper both sit up there and say, we're behind Jeff Driscoll 100%. He gives us the best chance to win. They're going to play it safe. And uh, really, that should be Will Muschamp's slogan. Will Muschamp, play it safe. I can see it on bumper stickers. Total opposite of Steve Spurrier, really. And his obvious disdain for the fans continues during these press conferences. He says only a tiny minority of fans are negative about Jeff Driscoll. Almost everybody in the Gator Nation is supportive of him. That is total nonsense. And he has to know that. At any rate, we got a game to play this week. We got to go into Tennessee, and this is different than the past years. In the past six, seven, eight years, both the Tennessee players and their fans knew they weren't going to win. They knew it ahead of time. They had hopes and dreams, but they knew they were going to lose. This year's different. I don't think they feel that way this year. I think they believe they're going to win. Genuinely believe they're going to win. And I think the crowd can feel it. They smell blood in the water. They're definitely going to be turning out for this one. And Worley's a pretty decent quarterback. He can sling the ball around a little bit. Our secondary is going to have problems. You know, the Tennessee fans, though, are still funny. You know, all this gushing about Butch Jones. I've heard so much gushing about Butch Jones from a number of Tennessee fans. And if you read the articles, they just gush and gush. They just love themselves from Butch Jones. Now, he's done nothing yet, mind you. He's won nothing. He's 7-9 and nine so far. But evidently, he's saying and doing the right things other than on the field. And uh, they just think that, that he's the man, even though he was their 10th or 12th choice in their coaching search. So we know Butch Jones talks a good game, but uh, I'm not convinced he can coach a lick any more than Derek Dooley. I guess time will tell on that. But the Tennessee fan base has been pulled down so much over the last five years that moral victories count as real victories. And that was the mentality going into Alabama. No one expected to win. But can we hang with them? Can we stay with them? Can we pull out a moral victory? This kind of thinking would have been unthinkable just a few years ago. And I don't enjoy being down the dumps, and I don't enjoy having these negative podcasts. But the team has to give me something to be positive about. And I've heard several times in the last couple of weeks, ah, fair weather fans. These fair weather fans need to go away. They need to hit the road. Complaining like this isn't being a fair weather fan. Walking away, not caring, not watching the games, that's being a Fairweather fan. Fans that don't care don't complain. Everyone wants the Gators to be successful, and they care about what's good for the program long term. So this game is a critical tipping point, uh, both on the rest of this season and in Will Muschamp's career. Let's face it. If we lose this game, we're almost certainly not even going to be bowl eligible. So, now that I've cheered you all up, let's do an interview. Today I'm going to talk to Sean Hale, a Gators season ticket holder residing in Tennessee, not too far from Knoxville. He's been known on the message boards for years as Tennessee Gator. Sean, it's great to have you on the podcast this week. Well, thanks, Aaron. It's great to be on with you. Thanks for the invite. Sean, first thing, tell us a little bit about uh, your history as a Gator fan. Well, I'm 47, married, father of five. And we moved to Tennessee back in 2000, but uh, my Gator roots go back. Some of my early childhood memories are uh, being at Florida Field. My dad was a huge Gator fan, season ticket holder. So my Saturdays were spent at that time before it was the Swamp at Florida Field. And remembering those names, uh, the Gaffney brothers, going back to, uh, I believe his name was Posey, was a field goal kicker in those all those games back during the Doug Dickey area. So that's some of my first memories of uh, Florida football. I uh, had a couple siblings go to UF. Uh, one was in the Gator Band. And I've just been a lifelong Gator and been a, glad to be part of the Gator Nation. But I've been a season ticket holder for many, many years. Uh, Dad uh, went back years when I was a teenager and uh, got us tickets. I said, what do you want for your birthday? So got the season tickets, and uh, I've had them ever since. And our first season was there was in 83. I was able to actually witness that Wilbur Marshall game against USC. So we've been there ever since and still have them today. And we'll be packing up the kids next week, headed down for LSU. 
Well, it's Tennessee week, which of course is one of the reasons you're here, and I know you live not too far from Knoxville, and you've had a number of years now to deal with the Tennessee fans, and we wonder about how they are here from afar in Florida, but can you give us an idea a little bit about what are the uh, what are the Tennessee fans like up there? Well, we moved up here in 2000, so the last 14 years have been really uh, exceptional. When you've had a run of 11-3, and three, uh, they're pretty docile to a degree, but you've got just like any other team. You've got some that are really rational about what's going on, and you've got some that are uh, extremely delusional about how things are. But uh, up here in the Vol Nation, uh, they've been somewhat tolerable, but when you've had the streak that we've had nine years in a row, uh, it's good times, uh, as I call it, being a gator on Rocky Top. Well, you just mentioned nine years in a row. As you lead up to the week of the Gator game up there, What's their attitude? Do they, do they have an attitude of, well, this is the year, or do they? Do you think they kind of feel defeated beforehand? Well, I'm going to tell you, if you had asked me that question at the beginning of the season, I would have told you that they were already chalking this game up as a loss. This year, it's different. Uh, in years past, they would really, they know what was coming. They'd want to try to convince themselves that they were going to win and that they'd think they could win. And in some years, they've had the ability that they could win. But this week, it's very, very different. There is a calm sense of, uh, I'd say, confidence amongst this bunch up here. And they know that they've got a team that could probably, it's probably the right uh, combination or could say the perfect storm of what could happen in terms of them actually uh, being competitive this year with us. Sean, what are your overall thoughts on the Gators so far this season? Cautiously optimistic is what I keep saying. There's parts of me that wants to be really uh, disappointed in in how to react as far as how things have gone. And I say that because we're only three games into the season, should be four, and we, we're not seeing what we thought we'd be seeing. And like I said, if we would, we would have talked at the beginning of the season, all the hype that we've had there, we thought that we would be seeing a lot of things that are different with this team, going from uh, just seeing – better quarterback play, better decisions by the head coaching staff. Just thought that we would actually see a progression. Uh, but in my opinion, we haven't seen that yet. Did you feel Muschamp needed to be replaced after last season? Yes, I did. I thought that that would actually happen. But obviously it didn't, and uh, we, we've had to deal with it this year. Uh, I can understand. I see both sides of it, but I really thought if that was the time to do it, it should have been done. But then again, really, who would we have gotten to replace him? So it was kind of a catch-22. Sean, the uh, Tennessee fans seem to be really fired up about Butch Jones. Do you think he's any different than the last couple of guys they've had in there? I mean, we've seen this kind of thing before from them. Well, if you look at Butch Jones and uh, Derek Dooley on paper, you'd probably think you're getting the same thing. And even we've made reference to why in the world would you hire the guy that Derek Dooley beat? But I can tell you just from seeing the guy up here, he's got these folks engaged. He's got them bought into what he's doing. Super nice guy. It's hard to really dislike him from that standpoint. But he is really going about this the right way to build the program the way it needs to be. Now, will he be successful? That all remains to be be seen. And will the UT Nation give him time to do that? Uh, they can be pretty impatient. And, and that's the expectation today is people want those results rather quickly. But in my opinion, you can go ahead and chalk this up as a year. He gets a free pass. He's probably not going to get a warm seat until sometime next year. Uh, If he were to lose to Florida this year and next year, the seat will get toasty pretty quick. Sean, what do you think Tennessee is going to do this week to uh, finally beat the Gators? Well, I'm going to tell you, if I was uh, coaching on a Tennessee sideline, I'm going to put eight in the box. I'm going to make Driscoll get in his uh, uncomfortable zone, and uh, I'm going to attack him. Until he does anything different, that would be the first thing that I would do from a standpoint defensively. Uh, offensively, I'm going to attack the secondary. That's proven to be a weakness so far, as far as Florida is what they've been dealing with uh, defensively. But that's where I would attack. The run game, I think, would be very hard to attack Florida's front seven right now. But that's how I would face it. So on the flip side, what do you think it's going to take for the Gators to beat Tennessee? What uh, kind of things are you looking for? Well, it's going to take a one. It's going to be a big effort. You're going to go into uh, Neyland there, and they're going to be really fired up. They're talking about checkerboarding out the stadium this week, so that's going to be the crowd is going to be the main factor they're going to have to deal with. 
But there's four things I really think that it's going to take to do it. And uh, one is going to be able to c- control the line of scrimmage. Uh, they do have some younger guys on there that are inexperienced, but it's not like they've thrown a bunch of freshmen on the line. They've only got two uh, true freshmen on the line, but they got a lot of redshirt juniors on there as well. So we can control the line. I think Florida's got the advantage as far as both lines of scrimmage there, especially our front seven on defense. Two, probably the biggest critical thing is correcting those miscues uh, in the secondary that we saw. And if you go back and you watch the games, and I think I have to even throw a, a shout out there to Sasquatch. He even mentioned it. It's, it's more like been blown assignments and miscues, and that's correct. Um, these guys, when you look at it and they button down, they can stay on these receivers, but they're getting in the wrong positions and they're making the wrong calls uh, defensively back there. So that's why these guys are wide open in the last couple of games. So they got to do that because I really feel Tennessee with Worley and it may be Peterman because Worley's still, uh, he got that injury against Georgia, so it could be him. And then the third thing is uh, normally with this game, it's been whoever's outrushed the other. And I believe that Florida's got the edge there to do that, to outrush Tennessee. Uh, you're going to probably see uh, Marlon Lane's not going to run much. They're turning this over to the herd kid. And uh, he's been running pretty good. So I think our front seven, if they keep him hemmed inside, they'll do good. I don't see him really getting to us from sideline to sideline. But the the last thing, and I think the most key critical part of it, uh, it's going to be Will Muschamp and Jeff Driscoll. And the reason I say that is we've all noticed a post here in the back on Gator Chatter that it's all about quarterback play. And I think that is the biggest issue that we've been dealing with. And uh, if Will gets in a situation that he has to put Trey on in, I don't know if he's ready to pull that trigger for some reason. And I really don't understand that. But we go as our quarterback goes, it seems to be, offensively. And I think we have not seen the true playbook that Roper has brought from Duke to its full extent because we've been limited by Jeff's what I call consistently inconsistent play. And uh, I think if... It comes down to that. It's going to be much champ's ability whether he feels that he can insert Trayon in there. Um, we know the kid can probably do it, but how do you know unless you give him a shot? So I think if those four things, if we can do that, we're real good at the turnover margin. And uh, if we can control that and those things, I think that's probably what we can do to win the ball game. For the Gators, a lot of people feel that this is the game that's going to determine the rest of the season. You think You think that as well? Absolutely. Uh, This is a must win. And I don't know when we've ever said that a Tennessee game is a must win this early in the season, but this, we've got to do this. It will set the tone definitely for the rest of the season. Sean, I really appreciate having you on this week. Okay. Thanks, Aaron. Okay. Sean Hale, everybody. Very, very, very nice guy. And as I usually say, if you've gotten this far in the program, thank you very, very much. You're a true diehard if you're listening at all these days, and don't let any of those people tell you that you're not a real fan. And, of course, if you haven't done so, come and visit us on Gator Chatter. One thing you can say is there's always lively discussion going on, whether you agree with it or not. Come, register, jump right in the middle of it. That's the fun of it. It's a great place to come and vent with your Gator brothers and sisters. So everybody have a great week, and let's look forward to beating Tennessee ten straight years. Go Gators!